To Melbourne United, been very quiet at this stage and it's not often with free agency just around the corner, it all really gets underway from next Thursday officially. Not often at this stage, Liam, do we say that we've heard nothing out of Melbourne as yet. Yeah, um, well, they're doing a good job of keeping a, a tight ship <laughs> because uh, they're doing things, no, no doubt about it. They're having conversations and they're, they're in the game. Damn, Shay's, actually, Shay's looking like a real golfer, already. Right? Oh, he's awesome. Yours a swing is a little different, but Shay's yeah. swing is bloody Oh, yeah, it's all, he's... Uh... What do we are? Yeah. It's probably a good start just to follow up on where you got to with the recruiting profiles that we sort of said, hey, let's dig into these ones a bit deeper at the last catch up. Cool. Dino, why don't you um, update the group on the Flynn Cameron one? Yeah, so um, wanted to finish his studies and schooling, all his exams um, Tuesday over there. So tomorrow, he was talking about after Tuesday, that we could set up a Zoom with him and, and do that. So hopefully in the next couple of days, we'll set up a Zoom with him and have a, have a good chat, see where we go from there. Hopefully he's got an agent and he's ready to start making decisions. As Barlow said, have we got enough support for Shay? We've doubled down if we got Ben Air to say we have got super support for that role. Would he be happy with a no minute role? Oh. Yeah, I, I certainly got to the point last night, it's, it's, it's Flynn or Ben. I, just, I struggled to get them both in the roster with the way I was putting it together. No, That's to me why we've got to, I've got to really push this Flynn one this week yeah. and really f***ing find out where he gets to. Because if we don't get Flynn, then we need Ben straight yeah. behind Shill. Yeah. yeah, correct. Two, two major parts of our recruitment this year is how do we support and, and protect Shea? Then just an update on Shea. Yeah, obviously took a head knock. Um, concussion symptoms will will know more, but um, yeah, obviously he's, he's had a few of those head knocks this year. So really have a look at this. He's just going to read it, and I tell you what, this is a bit of a concern here because that's a right elbow. It looked like to Shayley. We know he's had the concussion issues. Yeah, there's concern. Just knowing the recent history and um, severity of this space that we're finding more and more out about it. Um, so yeah, concern for him as a person, first and foremost. We weren't good enough when he was out of our lineup last year. And so protection that we need to put around him is certainly next to him at the, at the two guard position and the skill set of, of that player. And then, you know, behind him as well. And so, um, you know, we potentially see one of those positions, you know, being an, an import, but we're certainly, you know, looking at, you know, another Kiwi there in Flynn Cameron, who we think is um, really exciting, you know, coming out of college and has already played for national team. You know, moving down the other end, you know, supporting Ariel is a big one as well. And we, we saw our challenges with that early in the year last year until we picked up, you know, a Marcus Lee and, and really replaced that spot. So, you know, continuing to stay in contact with Joe Akul. How do they stop a red hot Joe Luala Chul? You can't. That's the best center in the league right now. Luala Chul puts the lead on it. Right through them and rejected over the top of T. When, you know, He's had enough of China or, you know, are we the best pathway to the NBA for, for Joe? Well, I think the big action items out of this that, that's going to move the needle for us is obviously we need to wait and hear back from Joe, which is probably num number one on our timeline list. Has he, has he given us any indication of which way he's leaning? So he's dead set 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hit him hard yesterday and, um, and the response was really good. Joe? Yeah, yeah. he's like, I'm saying guys from your league go to the NBA that I know I'm better at. And, so, and I was like, yep, the, the, the role, opportunity here, everything that you need to showcase yourself to get to the NBA. And um, so, yeah, if we just all just keep tapping into it in the yeah. next couple of days. And... But right now, if it's not Joe, we're looking at Marcus. Yeah. Um, which the timelines are not immediately tied to free agency. We don't think. We didn't discuss Delhi. Free agency officially opens on the date when it's published to do so. What is that, April 30? Yeah, uh, March 30, sorry. But, you know, 
people are having conversations. And Melbourne United, make no mistake, are expressing interest in some of those guys right now. So is that a Luke Travers? Is that a Will McDowell White? No signings or re-signings necessarily at this point? Yeah, interesting spot. You know, the obviously having Chris and Shay signed and in a good place with Ariel at the moment. And um, yeah, the conversations at the moment and the process that we're going through is is great. They do only have Chris Golding and Shay Ely under contract for next season. So a lot of decisions to be made for them, but the understanding that you can share with us today is that a couple of their players are going to test the market. That's right. United have made their priorities pretty clear. Um, and that means that when Mason Peatling, David Aquera, Isaac Humphreys, you know, these guys are, are going to test free agency. Just from our guys, so I got to um, chat with Isaac, and so he was sent a, a really appreciative message just about being contacted and loving his time here, and you know, hoping that someday he gets a chance to come back and play for us, and all the all of the great things about yeah. <laughs> someone having a good experience with us yeah. and everything like that. So um, yeah, it, was, it was really positive. It's good that it leaves in a positive vein because so many times when guys leave that because yeah. they want to be here, it doesn't end well. And Sammy's going to ask Joe and come back to us. But he said that Ogden's been hitting me up, so someone's leaked it already. So I suppose the intro with Joe and with Ogden saying that sort of thing is that we've We've signed off Ariel's contract overnight. So that's something else to... Yeah, I mean, we had yeah. Ariel right now with injury though, so for me, the big man cover's pretty important. And then if it was Joe that went down. So we need to say, yes, does this work or not? I don't agree with that. But do we think that's going to win us the championship? That's what I'm putting on the table. But we've got, got to be sitting team. in here putting together a team that we're going to think is going to win the championship. We've all got, also got to do it sustainably. I think there's been more discussion with a wider group of people involved in the club, more from the coaching staff, more from some ownership about how we put this team together. And, um, you know, that's that's modern day sport, is that more people are getting involved in, in decision making, but I think for the better in this one to say, you know, people have really challenged me where sometimes I fall in love with something and want to move down that path quickly. It's like, no, let's take our time. Let's get through our process and make sure that we've, we've ticked all the boxes and we still might get to the same point, but um, we got there with a, a better process and then hopefully a better outcome. Well, I think we've been pretty high on Krebs to add that shooting, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. Get a bit lighter and get your ball handling going and we see you more as a 2-3. We don't, we don't need you to have a four-man body. Yeah. So, um, the thing I keep picturing that we're missing is that f***ing pass it to someone and just say, just f get a shot. That's Joe, Shay, Chris. Do we need to work out, like, obviously, what falls first decides what happens in the play? It sounds like it. So does, when does Joe... In. Definite. Yeah. So he's agreed verbally. Okay. Yeah. And we got to get to the point in our head with this lineup to say Josie MVP of the week. We're talking about the Delhi recruitment. Obviously, okay. we we, like we just change. turned that and yeah. said that's our that's our import right now. Yeah. Well, we are assembled together once again on the marketplace because this is not a drill. Matthew Dellavedova is returning to the Hungry Jacks NBL for NBL 24. Yeah, it, this this gives Melbourne United, you know, just elite local talent across the board. You know, Delhi's one of those guys that when when he he's got something to to really fight for, and you know, he he loves to make people that don't believe in him really believe, and and I think. There's a lot of um, that that comes through with I didn't quite achieve what I wanted to achieve at United and I've got to go back and end up with a with an NBL championship and, and that's important to him in his career. It's been a big couple of weeks of build up but we have finally arrived today at the official opening of free agency ahead of the NBL 24 season. Let's do it. Oh, Travis. Uh, Perth kid. Yeah. Born and raised. Mm -hmm. Wildcat development player has yep. come through the system, drafted, has his rights owned by the Cavaliers, but now has the opportunity to, to test free agency. Now, a report from Lockie Reed last night saying, look, it's done, and it's going to be announced in a couple of days back at Perth. Hey, Luke, how, how you doing? doing? How you doing? Hey, Luke. Here's a wrap. 
Hey, LT. Yeah. Good. Um, firstly, oh, awesome. big welcome. You're probably not going to remember everybody, but big welcome on behalf of the club. Um, it's great to have you on board. And the announcement of, of Luke Pravers is, um, you know, something that a lot of teams have been sitting around. A lot of people have been sitting around waiting to see where he's going to land. He pointed to, to Melbourne United, Dean Vickerman, that culture, their track record of, of helping guys to the NBA, and he. He decided that was the best fit for him. Have him choose us to be the club, his destination to say, yeah, I think this is a club that's proven in Jack White, Jock Landau, Delhi, um, guys that have been able to come through this club and, and go to the NBA and for him to trust us to go ahead and, and do that and us believe in the skill set that he has that's still developing. Um, but to for a young player to say, yep, I can think I can really thrive in this environment. It's, um, you know, it's a credit to everybody at our club for what we've been able to achieve over the last few years. There's been a constant about, you know, just chatting to Joe. It's like, i have put all that aside and winning is the most important thing and that's going to help us, help us all get there, so. Absolutely, I think that sort of will take care of itself. Like if we're winning games and we're all playing well and stuff and that all will just happen naturally, I think. So um, yeah, definitely the main goal is to win as many games as we can. Um, and hopefully, yeah, I'd love to win another championship for sure. But to bring them all together, bring talented people, drop your ego, whatever your individual goals are, know that they're only gonna happen if you, if you win and succeed together is um, a really fun part of putting a team together. Yeah, I'm still young and I'm in no rush as well to, to get anywhere, so. Um, yeah, to win before all that happens. Um, yeah, it's a goal of mine as well. I look forward to the actual announcement and um, getting that out there in the public and letting them, everyone see that uh, the roster that we're building um, has a very strong local contingent. Yep, sounds good. Cool. Good job, Luke. Have awesome. a good weekend. Thank Thanks, man. There you go. It's becoming a formidable lineup that Melbourne are assembling and they haven't even started to play around with imports as yet. The, the last time we saw something close to this was probably this Melbourne United team two seasons ago that had Matthew Delvadova as its point guard. Except you, you, know, you substitute Luke Travers in for Jack White and that team two seasons ago was the best defensive team in the league. It finished the season uh, as, as the, with the best record in the league and so you know, they were a, basically a, a win away from getting to that grand final. So we Joe. So we got Joe's signed contract overnight, yeah. which is awesome. Nice. Yeah. So that's uh, that's great. He arrives 9 a.m. Friday. For me, this is a pretty good opportunity just to take stock, yeah. look at the names there, and say, okay, what are we missing? What do we need? First thing is consistent shooting. Second thing is some like strength and toughness. We talk about insurance and wanting cover across the whole roster. Yeah. Um, right now, there's that's probably the spot that's got the least amount of cover. That's what we're saying, we're good at we can, yeah. we're adding one more high level guy and, and one more coverage piece. And we've got to work out which spot's the best one to put in. Yep. Hey bro, I'm in a meeting right now. I'll talk to you more. I, I, we want to get this Zoom done as soon as we can with you and the fam as well. I'll try and get this done by the next couple of days. What do you got? It's Jeff McGuire. Hi Dan. I'm representing Kyle Bowen. Any interest from you? <laughs> you asked about that, Culture didn't you? guy, high basketball IQ, obviously can defend, has more of Offensive game than shown in college. Probably a better comparison than Majuk Deng and what we're trying to look for mm. against all here. Good to know. And you did ask who his agent was the other day. They were saying done in, in Perth. Now yeah. they're saying not done. Is this a scenario where they're just trying to get more money? Like, are we just that extra club trying to bump up someone's value or is he actually get a book? I don't know. Sure you know. Yeah, I think the, right now the. Um, the backup four spot um, to Travers is is an important one for us to to nail, and um, you know we we really kind of want a guy that can understand the position and at the four, but also be a little bit of support to the five as well, just in case there was any injury over there. So you know Kyle Bowen's a name that's come up with with some Marys in his, as a as a rookie as well. And, Hey! Hey! Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Hey, 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 mate. H
firstly, I want to talk about the, your decision to come back. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. We're pretty stoked with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, obviously, I was watching like the whole season. And then like I woke up and I saw Cook sign for the league and I was like, I'm going back. Is that it? That was the moment? Yeah. But yeah, once I saw that, I was like, yeah, this is the only way I can get there. I have to go back. Let's, let's talk about the goal then. Yeah. To get the NBA. Well, I feel like that's going to take care of itself, right? Just kind of like everything else. Like one thing Cooks did do was win. So that's above everything else. Let's win. I like, you know, I wanted to challenge you with the, um, you know, making the NBA and us. And it was, you solved that one pretty simply to say, that's just the end result of, of winning, which, which is great. Sorry about the delay, guys. Uh, we've had a fair bit of movement this week, of course, from a roster point of view. Um, you saw uh, yesterday with Glenn and Tanner, really strong announcements. But yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to have Joe announcement this afternoon. Um, so to welcome back Joe Luala Chul, I think everyone, you know, whether it's all the fans, the NBL fans, but us as a club to have you know someone who's a potential MVP of the league come back in. We've made it. We're on the strip, Las Vegas, NBL at NBA Summer League action, and it is set to be a massive one. Yeah, I think that's a part of it to talk through, and it was a little different for us this year, um, knowing that we only had the one player the really that we were looking at, and, and then things slightly changed as, as that went on. So, yeah, I, I think as a group, we were just so um, felt really comfortable with the fact that we'd got our roster in a, in a really good position. Um, and the fact that we only had the one spot to really fill out. And I think, you know, it was interesting getting flashbacks as I was flying over thinking, wow, well, like, you know, this time last year we went in with a similar sort of scenario. And then, you know, we hit the ground and um, all of a sudden- Nick Trulson, it's nice to see you in Vegas. Tough news, obviously, recently with Joe Luala yeah. Chul. It was very exciting to have him back in the league, still is, but gonna miss some time. Where does everything sit now with Melbourne United? Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna take it a little bit slow. Um, surgery was only last week. Yeah, I, I think that it, getting over the disappointment for Joe and then, and then probably for us as a team thinking, wow, Things have gone along so well and, you know, everything that we tried to get, when you think about players that we wanted to bring in, we had done such a great job across the board of bringing in those really targeted players and to have someone like Joe come back in, knowing that he was nearly the MVP of the league, the opportunity he wanted to come back, be the MVP of the league, get to the NBA next year, it was, um, it was definitely deflating. Um, Joe's welfare is the most important thing for us, so we're working it through with our medical team, um, but it might mean we need to bring someone in for a short period of time at the start of the season. But on the back of that, because I've been out, it was it was a good time just to come in, I think, and have a bit of a chat around process and timeline, around a couple of different things, A, Joe and his welfare, and how we manage that over yep. the next three or four weeks. Um, but then also the replacement piece, and if we need to and if we don't, and then that scenario piece. So, take us through the scenarios. Yeah. What could happen today? Yeah. So, firstly, if surgery is successful and they have a RICO. And we'll know today whether, because <coughs> do you know straight away whether the surgery is successful? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, that's what we'll know today. Look forward to that message. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> what time's he going? Uh, now. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of hours surgery. I was trying to work out, you know, what are we done? What are we done wrong? And, you know, you, you have those little moments to say, we just went through the, the craziest um, year of injuries of certainly my career in the sport. You know, you can't control it. We have no ability to um, control what injuries we can do the best we can and the fitness staff and the medical staff to to get people right but it's it's going to happen once we understood yes it's going to be 10 to 12 games um, what do we do can, can we cover that internally like we did with uh, Mason Peeling when Jack White went down do we do we have enough and we realize no we don't have enough to cover it internally uh, if there's injuries and so you know, finding a replacement that understood our league. We all felt comfortable approaching Rob and asking the question of him. Um, he shut it down 
An Olgan bomb just arrived on my phone. Well, like as this. we're recording. About Melbourne United mm. and this Joe Luala Chul situation, literally as we're recording, Rob Lowe has signed with Melbourne United as a nominated replacement player, sources told Mr. Ulich. That is the best of uh, of a, a solid bunch of replacement players. And yeah, I like that signing a lot for Melbourne. Yeah, I stayed persistent and, and we got to a point where... He showed interest and his wife, Kelly, you know, thought, hey, this is a possibility. Maybe we, we can do this. And um, so, yeah, they found a way as a family to, to be able to make this work. But, yeah, we love what Rob offers that's different to Ariel in his ability to stretch the floor and, and shoot the basketball. And we've had some certainly some battles against um, the breakers where he's made big shots. Yeah, losing an MVP, losing the, the talent, we knew we weren't going to replace it. It was always going to be about you know everybody contributing a little bit more to to cover the loss yeah i'll get we'll jump straight into it um talking about this guard and i think we'll just go back through the criteria of what we think is most important and then who we think matches up to that yeah i think we we kind of saw this savvy veteran 30 year old that will come off the bench and make smart plays, shoot the basketball at a high clip, you know, really be looking to be in the game to, to close out where his, his IQ and, um, you know, scoring ability could really help us close out some games. And, um, you know, the search changed because of Joe's injury to say, well, now we need a guy who can play in an ISO and can get us um, a bucket on his own, it's, but it's really become a, such an important part that I've got a key date to say I need to have it done. So there's a little bit of time to, to st still get through and um, we know a guy's going to drop off our list and get other jobs and, and different things if, if we don't push. So finding the right guy in the next couple of weeks is going to be important. The big question it is, how much creation do we need from this player? And I, I think we've we've talked about this one a lot, and um, I'll throw it to you, assistant coaches, just to talk about how much creation do we need from this guy. Uh, yeah, I agree. For me, shooting is the most important, and uh, I think uh, some level of defensive ability. I think probably for me, maybe is second most important. Then I would love to have that playmaker as well. And then it's like, okay, well, what's the budget? Because I look at the Ian Clark clips. I'm like, geez, I like that guy. He seems a lot more polished, better playmaker. Maybe he can give you the other things that Hornsby can. And that's why I'm like, geez, I really like Ian Clark. But if it's not a reality, and it's like, well, you can't get the guy that ticks the box of being an elite shooter, being a reasonably good defender and a playmaker. It's like, well, if it can't happen, I think I would tend towards ticking the shooting box and the defense box if I have to only have two out of three rather than the playmaking box. Although I would love to have it. And if there's any way someone like an Ian Clark can occur, well then I would love to, for us to explore it. I think Joe going down hurts our ability to wait long term on this. Like to get a guy in and have him here for a little while and have him firing by the start of the season, I think it's going to be really important. I'd take a 10 day preseason with Ian Clark over a four week, five week preseason with anyone else on this list though. So, yeah, to me, walking out of this meeting to say, we haven't found the perfect guy, or we kind of have in Ian Clark, but we kind of, we don't know yet. Um, so I, I think we, we keep working for another, another week. Hey, Ian. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Thank you so much for your time this morning, our time, and, and evening and afternoon, your time as well. First and foremost, uh, I just want to say thank you. Um, I never take for granted these opportunities. I want to win. Um, like I said, I just want to I want to be a part of a uh, winning organization and obviously help when I can and being able to start the season, being able to, you know, gain chemistry, um, obviously with the guys on the floor and and, you know, become acquainted with the with the area and, and with everyone and, and get to work, honestly. Yeah, preseason's been great. Ian Clark, um, 
you know, we got him in at a, at a good stage where he was able to just see some games in Tasmania and now, you know, fit in with the rest of the guys coming back. And, and CG, unbelievable leader, going to another World Cup for the Boomers and walked straight back in the door and made sure our standards were as high as they've ever been. And, you know, Shea Ely had an amazing uh, World Cup. I think it's great, the mindset that he's going to come back in uh, to this team. It's a great group of guys, talented, competitive. Um, yeah, I can't wait for game one against South East. In the last two seasons, we've won an enormous amount of games. Uh, you know, there have been elements that haven't quite gone right for us, and but that happens for all teams. And I think, you know, we can sit here and say, oh, we're unlucky with injuries and um, and and all sorts of things. But all teams go through that. I think it's about how we have that steely resolve now to say, we've been really close the last two years. It's now time to get back to where we want to be, and that's to win a championship.